Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan and welcome once again to the Vast Anonymous Comic Book Vault. Today we're going to do something totally different. We're going to start something really exciting, at least exciting to me. Uh, we're going to be talking about my uh, one of my very favorite superheroes. Uh, second, probably only to Batman, and that is, in fact, The Tick. April is Tick Month, and uh, this month I'm going to be doing uh, all kinds of stuff about The Tick. I'm going to be reviewing uh, my entire Tick collection, or at least as much of it as I can manage uh, within the month of April, and we're going to start off with The Tick Omnibus, uh, the first Tick Omnibus. There are several of these, and um, this collects the first six issues of um, the original Ben Edlund's Tick. Um, the Tick is a character that I grew up with. He is my favorite parody of superheroes, but he's also just one of my favorite superheroes. Um, uh, the Tick is a really original, very imaginative kind of uh, kind of superhero comic. Uh, it's really fresh. It's uh, Ben Edlin is is a comic genius, and uh, this was always my kind of humor. It's clever. It's uh, sometimes subtle. It's sometimes right in your face, and um, it's goofy. It's cerebral. Sometimes uh, it's 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 great stuff. So we're gonna be talking about uh, we're gonna be talking about this today. And uh, what I want to do with these is I want to make this series uh, all, all the tick stuff I'm doing this month. And by the way, I'm gonna be doing a tick stuff on, on the vault. I'm gonna be doing, doing a lot of extra vaults, but also uh, I'll be talking about the tick on 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 several of our other shows as well this month. And throughout this, what I'd like to do is uh, make this. Uh, part review and, and part an educational experience uh, because I expect that a lot of our viewers know um, maybe something about the Tick. Uh, maybe, maybe they remember the cartoon show, maybe they remember the live action show, maybe they just know that he's the blue guy that yells spoon all the time. Um, but I, uh, but but a lot of people don't don't have the comics, haven't read the comics, uh, and I have to confess that um, I'm going to learn quite a bit going through this as well because I've not read all of the comics, uh, even a lot of the stuff that I own, and so um, a lot of this is going to be uh, me sharing my experiences with you as I go along. And so, um, spoiler warning: uh, there will definitely be some things spoiled as I'm going along. Um, I don't know exactly how much I'm going to, uh, to to tell you about everything because again, this is going to be um, um, most review, but also um, just uh, uh, letting folks know some of the stuff that happens in these, and um, kind of sharing it with you a little bit in case uh, you you can't get a hold of these yourself. Um, the tick is not the easiest thing to get a hold of. It's certainly not something that you can uh, very readily, as, as far as um, as far as the the comics, it's not something that you you can very readily go up to your comic book store and get most of the time. Uh, you, you, m most of the time, you're going to have to get these. Um, um, these things online someplace because um, it, it, it's, it's really interesting. The tickets are really underground thing and one of the things I love about it is that it's it's the it's the perfect story of the underground comic that goes totally mainstream and I don't think Ben Edlin gets nearly enough credit for, for what he managed to do with this. Um, in case you don't know, New England Comics is not primarily a comic book publisher. It's not now, and it never was. Uh, New England Comics is a uh, group of comic book stores. Uh, they're a comic book retailer. If you go to uh, their website, um, you'll you'll see a lot more ads for DC and Marvel and things than you will for their own comics. And and the first time I I, I looked at their website, I was like, what was that about? And uh, it turns out that um, they they primarily just sell comic books. They're a retailer like 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 any other. And um, what happened was, Ben Edlin drew the tick as a mascot for in, in their newsletter for New England Comics back in 1986. And uh, it, it caught on. People loved it. And so he started writing an independent comic book series in uh, 1988. And it it, uh, it caught on. It got really popular, and so New England um, uh, kept uh, kept reprinting it, reprinting it as he put out issues. But um, he had he had he had, a, he had a regular job, and he uh, was just pretty much doing this on the side. And so it took a long time to get the issues out. This wasn't primarily what he was doing. And and, and as I said, New England wasn't even really a comic book publisher. So most of the things New England has published has just been the Tick. Uh, they have a whole Tick store on their website, and they've done a few things. A few other things here and there, but for the most part, as far as the publisher, all they're really known for is this. And um, so, 
we're going to take a look at uh, kind of the, the mind of the tick, the mind of, of Manadlin as we go along with this. And of course, um, as we get past the initial run of tick comics, we're going to find um, that, that, that other folks uh, work on it as well. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of compare them and take a look at, uh, at, 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 at uh, how different people uh, tried to, to do the tick after they, t- they, uh, they took over after Benedlin because um, it, it's such a specific kind of tone. And um, it, it's, it certainly can't be the easiest thing to write. So what I want to start off with, before we even get into the omnibus itself, this, by the way, uh, was was printed in 1995. Um, this is this is one of the later printings. Um, like I said, they just uh, New England will, will just keep printing printing this and printing this, um, and they've done they've done even different versions of it of it since then. Um, I mean, there's thicker volumes that have even 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 more of the issues in, in one now. Uh, but like I said, this this collects the first uh, six issues, and it uh, it's Sunday through Wednesday. Um, it says because the first three issue or the first I'm sorry uh, six issues just take place over the span of four days and um, so we'll take a look at this but before we get into the story itself um, I'd like to start off by uh, reading Ben Edlin's uh, preface and I'm going to do this with each of these omnibuses uh, because I'm sure I'm sure a lot of the folks watching this aren't actually going to get this in the omnibus and aren't going to be able to take a look at it and um, so I'm for, for each of these I'm going to go ahead and, and, and read these so that we can um, get a little bit of, of a sense of uh, what Ben Edlin was, was like when these were published and um, what was going on in his head when he was writing the tick um, and uh, by the way uh, if you don't know much about Ben Edlin I should also mention um, that uh, he has gone on to be extremely successful he was one of the producers and uh, writers on Angel, uh, and he's the, sh- as far as I know, he's still the showrunner of Supernatural, and uh, he's he's done some great great stuff. And if you remember, um, if you watch Angel, and you, if you watched Angel, and you remember much about that show, uh, he wrote the Puppet Angel episode, uh, Smile Time, which uh, if you if you really think about it, is is very much his kind of sense of humor. If you, if you, if you read any of the Tick, uh, so anyway, uh, here's his preface, and uh, it reads. Our fervent hope is that this collection will fall into the hands of people out there who have never seen The Tick, and that after reading The Omnibus, they will become avid fans. Actually, our most fervent hope is that the country's single-minded devotion to The Tick will be so staggering, we'll have to create a merchandising empire that would make the new kids on the block look sincere. To that end, we ask you to please put this book on your coffee table and force your guests to read it. These six issues represent a lot of time and thought. Lots of care and unnecessary precision went into the creation and production of these comics, and that makes things like the Omnibus very gratifying. As you can see, when I started doing this, I had a lot to learn. The change in art and plot structure from the first to the sixth issue is evidence of that. When The Tick was first published, we pretty much assumed that it would run maybe two or three issues and be cancelled. This was in the turbulent wake of the black and white explosion, and the market looked bleak. To our surprise, sales in the first three issues were very strong, and the demand for the book increased every issue. Exciting! Now we have a very enthusiastic readership, which nags us to get the book out more often and sends us deranged letters of praise and conspiracy. I suppose it would be appropriate to thank all those people who have given me money to work at home so I never have to bathe, shave, or or wear itchy suits, or play racquetball with coworkers who want me dead. So thanks. So uh, now that we've uh, looked at the preface, let's go ahead and get into the book itself. We're going to look at uh, each of the issues um, very quickly. And uh, here is the uh, very first page. So uh, we, we, we open up looking at the tick in an in insane asylum. And uh, he, he gets released. Uh, we, we know very much, uh, we, we know very little about him. Uh, but but uh, he, he seems to be uh, uh, this, this very crazy person who wants to be a superhero. And it's a really good start uh, for the tick uh, because he's he's he seems like a lunatic. A lot of people think that he's crazy. He doesn't seem to know anything about his own backstory or uh, who he is, and that's part of the parody of the comic. Um, so he he goes on just uh, just he's bored, and he was he was born he was bored uh, in the insane asylum, but now he's out and he's not real sure uh, what he's going to do. But he uh, knows that he wants to be a superhero, and uh, he he says destiny is a funny thing. Um, he he thinks his destiny is to go fight crime. Um, importantly. It isn't that he wants to uh, stop crime, he simply wants to fight crime. You'll notice uh, in, in here, if you've never uh, looked at the tick anywhere outside of uh, the, the, the TV shows, that he has a Viewmaster in the comics. Uh, he, he doesn't have, have that anywhere else, uh, I would assume for copyright reasons. And so, 
uh, he, he's, he's all about uh, gadgets. Uh, the Tick wants everything, or he thinks he wants everything that a regular superhero has, and so he thinks he needs gadgets, and he uses his, his Viewmaster um, to help uh, spot crime. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hilarious. And so um, he, he, he has his uh, first um, encounter with ninjas, and uh, we, we find that the, these ninjas are everywhere, and that's part of the parody of the comic, uh, the idea that there's this... Um, this this constant mass of ninjas that are um, that are absolutely everywhere, and uh, that's played out for a whole lot of comedy uh, throughout the book. Um, Edlin likes to play a lot with different kinds of word um, of word balloons, and I really I, I really like uh, some some of the uh, really funny sound balloons that he does: um, parry, thrust, dodge, and then haiku. Um, so this first issue. It's mostly just the tick running around the city uh, trying to figure out what the heck to do with himself. Uh, you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of plot that happens in, in, in even these first two issues. And uh, as Edlin mentioned in his preface, uh, it becomes more uh, uh, plottier and um, a little less uh, running around uh, ragged um, than, the, than the first couple issues. But the, but the art is absolutely beautiful. Uh, one of the things I love about it is that it, it looks like it's meant to be in black and white. Um, Edlin has a great sense of shading. And uh, I, re I really love looking at it. I, I, my my, uh, my stepdad and I reviewed the, this first issue uh, by itself once on, on Late Night, and uh, Jeff made the... Uh, he's the real plaid rabbit on YouTube. J Jeff made the point that um, one, of the, one of the nice things about this book is that the art is not entirely consistent. It looks a little bit different from page to page. Uh, Edlin does have his own style, but depending on what he's trying to do with a panel, he'll, he'll draw people in different ways, and I, I always really like that point. Um, you'll notice a lot of parallels to uh, even, even the pilot of the animated show uh, with, with the guy who says, hey, you can't be a tick. Ticks suck blood. You don't suck blood. And then, of course, the tick says, I got a straw right here, pal. Do you want a demonstration? That's one of my uh, favorite moments in the animated show, and, and, and it comes from right here. Um, You'll notice that this book, of course, is a lot more adult than the animated show, so it, it, it will go further with jokes like that. Uh, so he's sucking through a straw, and then uh, he, his, his, uh, his lights go out, and he, and he just kind of faints. Um, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he, later on, he finds uh, Clark Oppenheimer, who is uh, clearly a parody of, of Superman. And, and once again, as, Ed, as Edlin mentioned in the preface, uh, this was much more of a parody comic a, a, as it started. And, and it stayed, and it, and it continued to parody superheroes, but it became more of its own thing as it went along. At, 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 the, at the beginning of this, it, it plays up much more for the individual jokes. Um, it's about what superhero, what specific superhero can we, can we make fun of? and what are the jokes, and the plot itself and the characterization are pretty much just a backdrop to do that. Uh, so one of the, one of the uh, funnier ideas, I, I think, is, is uh, when, when, when we first see uh, Clark Oppenheimer here, uh, we, 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 see, uh, we see the tick here um, just kind of freak out um, with this kind of nonsensible, yeah, and it's in a word balloon that looks kind of like the Superman symbol. I think that's a neat touch. Uh, and then uh, they get hit by a train, <laughs> and we find that the tick is nigh invulnerable. And uh, and of course Clark's like, hey, nigh? What what is what is, what is nigh? Uh, and and so uh, there's there's a moment in here where um, where uh, he starts asking the tick. Um, because basically the tick just annoys the crap out of him. Uh, he's supposed to be the city's superhero. Uh, Clark is. He's the caped wonder. Naturally, of course, he's, he's Superman, but he's, he's, he's the caped wonder. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the tick is kind of moving in on his terrain, and, and it, it totally irritates Clark. Um, and, and so... Um, this this thing mostly is just parroting Superman. Uh, Clark works at the World Planet, which is uh, which is one of my favorite jokes. I love the redundancy of that. Uh, the, the, the the it's both the world and a planet. It's the World Planet. Uh, he works for uh, his editor instead of Perry White is Perry Beige, and uh, it's 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 very funny. So um, one of the things that, that that's fun about the omnibuses is that uh, sometimes they put these extra um, little things in, and and so they have this. Uh, um, this 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 fun parody of the learn to draw kind of books, and so they they he starts with uh, step one: carefully draw an oval in the center of your paper. Step two: now uh, now bisect that oval by drawing a line through uh, uh, its poles. And then step three: draw the tick holding all of that. 
Uh, it's absolutely hilarious. So um, I'm going to run through this a little bit quicker um, as we go along. I wanted to kind of um, set us up with that first issue, but uh, so so Clark starts working at the uh, daily or at the the Daily Planet, the, the World Planet, and um, he's mistaken for the new crossword editor, uh, which is <laughs> which is hilarious. And he's wearing uh, a necktie because he decides he decides that like all, all superheroes, uh, like Clark, because he figures out that Clark is the Cape Wonder. Um, just just looking at his picture in the newspaper. Oh my God, that's 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 the Cape Wonder, and so he said, "I need to I need to disguise too." So he just puts on a necktie, and everybody buys it, um, which is uh, part of the absurdist comedy in this. Is that uh, the, the the world in this seems to be almost as messed up as the Tick is, although although not quite. Um, the Tick has has these these amusing quirks, like he's he doesn't think he has a costume. He he claims that his costume is just part of his body, um, and, uh, and 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 things like that. So it's super absurd. But the world around him is 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 almost just as nuts. Um, we have this great moment where uh, <laughs> where Clark finds his crystal and he says, "Oh my God, it's Marlon Brando!" And once again, we get those word balloons that are um, the, the the shape of the Superman symbol. And Mar- Marlon Brando shows up, and uh, I I've, unfortunately I've cut this off a little bit, but um, he, he he says this this fun stuff to the tech. I don't want to give away every great joke in this in case you, you get a chance to read this yourself. But <laughs> you, know, the, you get to the end of this, and it says uh, and it says end of um, end of slide one. Turn crystal over. Uh, <laughs> I, I love that. So um, then uh, I, the, the Tick finds out from that uh, that that um, Clark is allergic to uh, something that's a lot like kryptonite. And um, he's, he's the, the planet he's from is, is Otter Creek, so he's allergic to Otter Creekite. And again, as you can tell, this is kind of meandering. Again, there's not a lot of plot yet. Uh, it's pretty much just the, the, the tick in the office versus the Cape Wonder. And he kind of drives the Cape Wonder crazy. Uh, Clark makes an ashtray out of his car, and, um, and it just drives him nuts. I love this moment where uh, the tick knocks his glasses out, and uh, he, he, he goes up to, to uh, the guy who's supposed to be Jimmy Olsen. Um, he, he, here he's just named Billy. And uh, he does the, the Batman trick with his, um, with his hands over his eyes. And um, so, so that you can't tell that he, you know, that he's that he's that he's uh, the Cape Wonder, that he's Superman, and uh, I, I think I think that's one of the best jokes in the comic. So then I'll begin into issue three with Oedipus, and uh, and now we're away from all the Superman stuff, and uh, now we're making fun of Elektra of all people, uh, and we start getting into the real meat of the thing, uh, the, the 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 real plot. So um, Oedipus, of of, of course, um, is supposed to be Elektra, basically, and. Um, what we with, with with Oedipus and and later on with Paul the Samurai and with some other characters like that, we, we begin to to, to discover that uh, a running theme that Edlin is playing with, which is um, the people in this book just do things because they're bored. Uh, the Tick is bored, uh, so he wants to be a superhero. Uh, he seems to have. Um, kind of more noble aspirations than some of these than some of these other folks. Um, only in the sense that he he, he feels it's it's destiny and he's compelled to do this. And for a lot of these other people, it's just I'm bored and I want adventure. I want to go do something. And uh, they're not talking about destiny and things like that. So uh, so so Oedipus is like this too. With her, it's it's um I just I didn't have anything uh, better to do. So um, I joined a, a band of ninjas. And uh, then they got taken over by um, this this uh, terrible corporate mastermind who turned. Um, who, who uh, created a theme park uh, called Ninja World. And um, there's this whole plot that starts revolving around uh, something called the Thorn of Oblivion. And um, we'll get more into that um, um, uh, here in a second. Uh, but basically, uh, the Tick and Oedipus team up, and uh, they start fighting these ninjas. And, and, and one of this uh, the, that Oedipus used to work for, and now she's, now she's ran away from. And one of uh, the great running gags in this is that uh, Oedipus knows all of these ninjas by name, regardless of the fact that they all look exactly identical. So uh, she'll, she'll be, she'll be, uh, one of the ninjas will come up and start talking to her, and, 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 sh- and she'll, and she'll call him Bill or Tommy or whatever. And uh, it, it, it's, it's funny every time. Uh, there's this. Okay, here's the district manager. This is the guy who runs the um, who, who, who owns the, the the theme park, and uh, you have this kind of classic. Um, combo trope that he's that, that Evelyn is making fun of, where you have the two bad guys who are who are um, who are going at it, and then um, you, you have you have the superhero that has to go up against both of them. So 
you have the uh, you have the you have the big bad who owns the ninjas, and then you have um, this guy who's who's now um, running the ninjas for him. That's why he's called the district manager, which I think is very funny. And um, basically, w w what happens is uh, he's he's just turned it into this uh, uh, you know horrible corporate thing, and. Um, and so then uh, we we have let me get in here a little bit. Um, we have we have Oedipus's backstory, which I do, which I just mentioned a, a minute ago, which is basically just she was bored and she was working with ninjas, but she doesn't like that anymore, so she's left now that the district manager is around. And you have the uh, the, the ninjas all, um, by the way, pretending to be a big hedge, which is uh, which is funny. And and then and, and, and I love this. I love how he parodies comics um, where he'll come right out and just blatantly state the obvious. So next issue we get a big fight. Um, it, it, it cracks me up because we haven't really had that yet. Three issues in, we haven't really had a fight. So yeah, the next issue, a big fight. Uh, so. Now uh, the Tick disguises himself with a suit. It's always funny to see the Tick in a suit. And um, he and Oedipus are at um, a, a party run by uh, her, her uh, kind of evil stepmother um, who's, who's in with the ninjas. And then we meet Paul the Samurai. And um, Paul the Samurai has not really grown on me that much that much yet. I've not read a lot with him in it. Uh, he has his own spinoff series later on, which um, I don't have right now. Hopefully I can get my hands on it and review it this month. Um, but, but anyway, um, it, it, my problem with Paul the Samurai is that he talks talks too much like the Tick. I feel like they're kind of the same character, except that Paul the Samurai is is a samurai. Um, but there are some amusing things that that, that he does with him. Uh, he he um, he fights with a sword that he puts in a big loaf of bread, and then he the, then he fights with a loaf of bread. And you have these ninjas later on that complain that they got bread in their eyes and stuff like that. Um, here's this great shot of the Tick freaking out, where he's like, "I'm being attacked by Hedge." Um, this is such a goofy comic book, but it's so much fun to so much fun to read. I, and I love all this really dynamic, like I, like I, like I said earlier with with the shading. But you know, you look at the tick, and um, in in these panels here, he's he's all his head's all cast in shadow, uh, and and it, and it looks all really dark and edgy. But the um, but the stuff going on around it is not. It's super silly, and uh, the juxtaposition is just absolutely hilarious. So. Um, next, we meet Arthur, and I meant to point this out earlier. Uh, maybe, maybe you saw it um, in some in, in some of the panels I was, or one of the panels I was showing earlier. But um, in the last issue, there's this great shot where you see the tick, uh, where you see Arthur, um, very very small, just flying in the background. And if, if if you blink, you miss it. And um, it was a really neat way to introduce him to, for a little bit of foreshadowing. But uh, here comes Arthur, and um, in in every other incarnation of the tick, uh, Arthur shows up way way earlier than this. Um, this is issue four, and uh, and suddenly here's Arthur, and we find out that uh, Arthur has been following the Tick, and um, is uh, trying to help out with uh, this whole Throne of Oblivion thing, trying trying to find this thing. And the, the whole deal with the Throne of Oblivion is that I've lost my presenter here. Okay, there we go. The, the The whole thing with the Throne of Oblivion is uh, basically that um, it's it's this it's the special artifact. Of course, Evelyn's making fun of artifacts, which I love because because um, if you know me with Rewind, I, I get I get really um, irritated sometimes with with artifact plots where everything is about going and finding a, a, a thing and not um, and, and not enough about you know developing characters. It can be too lazy. So it, it's really funny that that Evelyn uses it here. And the Throne of Oblivion is just this thing that uh, the ninja think if. It gets destroyed. It destroys all the ninjas. They just all go away, and um, and we find out at the end that that's not a, that that's not the case, and that there's nothing magical about it whatsoever. Naturally, um, so as we uh, so as we go through here, uh, there's this there's this um, great moment where where the tick finally has to deal with something real, and uh, he he doesn't he doesn't know how to deal with it, and so um, what happens is Oedipus gets hurt, and he has to uh, take her to an ambulance, and she goes to the hospital, and uh, it freaks him out. He doesn't know what to do. He's not used to bad things happening, and um, he. He he he, uh, he later on uh, in the hospital room has this great moment where he says, um, "I'm doing so." The tick thinks to himself a lot, and he says, um, "I'm I'm I, I think I might have experienced a brief moment of lucidity." Um, one of my favorite shots in the whole omnibus is uh, right here with these buildings, um, where where uh, the tick is. Is uh, is dealing with the fact that he's a little bit nuts, and he's got these buildings in his head, kind of taunting him. Um, the, the, one of the big things about the Tick, uh, if you know from watching the cartoon show and, and, and even the live action show, which they managed to do one shot of in the in the in the, in the first episode, uh, is that the Tick likes to get around by jumping on buildings, 
and uh, he always breaks them as he's jumping around. So it's very fitting uh, that he's being attacked in his dreams by these by these buildings. And um, issue four is when is when we really, issue three is when plot starts happening. And issue four is when we for, start to find that Edlin's actually really doing something with this. He, most of it is about just just the comedy and the silly jokes in the moment. But um, but but there's but there's a little bit of some um, of of some actual uh, thematic stuff going on too. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So, um, the, the, the Tick uh, decides that he wants revenge for uh, Oedipus getting hurt, so he decides, I'm going to go destroy Ninja World. And uh, he, he, he picks up his Viewmaster, and he just happens to have a slide in it about Ninja World. He's like, I'm going to go destroy Ninja World. And he does just that. Look at that. He just, he just completely destroys it. And uh, so, this, uh, so this guy who, who, who runs all the, the ninja, I, I can't remember his name. I, I, I hate that. Um, he... he, he uh, he gets really angry at the uh, district manager, and um, in, in the next issue, um, he, he threatens uh, to, to kill the district manager in his sleep. So um, we'll see later on if anything, excuse me, ever comes ever comes of that. So uh, now we get into um, the uh, early morning of a million zillion ninjas. Uh, we 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 we, we uh, earlier had um, the. Uh, what was it? The the uh, night of, of a million zillion ninjas. Now we have the early morning of a million zillion ninjas, and he's he's freaking out about losing Ninja World. And um, so now the Tick is uh, in the hospital room, like I said, uh, uh, having having to deal with his brief moment of lucidity. And uh, it turns out that um, Oedipus is okay. And um, so then he, um, with the help of Arthur, um, finds the um, the guy who runs all the ninja, and uh, he bluffs. And well, he 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 uh, he claims he's not bluffing. He says the tick never bluffs, but he's got the thorn of oblivion. Thanks to Arthur, they managed to get it. And um, it, as you can tell here, he it looks like a giant piece of candy corn, which the which the tick mentions. Uh, it looks like a giant piece of candy corn. And um, he accidentally drops it because of course he's the tick and he does things like that. And and so um, then uh, it crashes and and of course nothing happens. Um, but uh, but because the uh, leader of the ninja um, jumps after it and uh, falls to his doom, um, it means the end of the uh, of the ninja. Um, of course, they don't they, they don't all die like they thought they would um, with with the with the uh, with the end of the thorn. But um, it, it breaks it breaks up the group, and so um, suddenly uh, Arthur starts. Um, Kind of, kind of giving the speech, which is funny because we haven't had the Tick have a big speech yet, which he does all the time in in, in, in the uh, in the shows. Um, it's really Arthur who makes the first big speech, and again, uh, thematically, we find that Edlin's actually doing something with this. Uh, and, and and what what he what he says is that the thorn um, was 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 a catalyst. It wasn't something that was actually magical and would actually destroy all the ninja, but it was a it, it, it was a catalyst that um, got things in motion because they believed that it would. And he he then um, makes a parallel between that and the tick, and he says, "Tick, you you too are a catalyst. Um, you you are a magnet for adventure." And he says, um, "I can't find adventure on my own, and th and that's what I want." And once again, like all the other characters in the book, he's he's bored. He's got nothing better to do, and that's that's uh, Edward kind of talking about the the monotony um, sometimes of. Uh, you, you, you know, our, our just regular American lifestyle. You you go to you you get up, eat some breakfast, you go to work, uh, you come home, you have dinner, and you go to bed. And that, that kind of monotony of life. And, and Arthur, um, in every incarnation, uh, is an accountant. He leaves that business. He, he puts on his moth suit, and he um, wants to go out and save the world. And um, but but what he but what he says is. Um, Tick, you, you uh, wherever you go, adventure follows, and uh, you, like the thorn, um, are a uh, are, are a are a catalyst. You get things going, um, but but in a but in a pleasant, optimistic kind of way. And um, I think uh, I think that's that's uh, that, that's really neat. So um, then uh, th then we kind of interrupt uh, all that halfway serious stuff with, my God, I have pockets. <laughs> um, the tick pulls money out. I don't know where he gets money. It's not like he works or anything. Um, but I, I, but I, but that's one of the funnier moments in the book. And then um, the tick um, is not the one in this who says, "Hey Arthur, let's uh, why don't you be my be my sidekick?" In the uh, in in both of our other incarnations, he does that. Uh, but 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 here it's the reverse. Here it's it's Arthur who says, uh, "Hey tick, I w I want to be your sidekick." And um, the tick's like. It takes him a minute to get his mind around this. He doesn't really understand why he needs a sidekick, and um, but but uh, but he finally agrees to it, and 
what uh, what ends up happening is he finally kind of kind of starts starts being speechy. And what I love is that he's he's got in his head what superheroes are supposed to be like. And um, so so naturally, of course, he does go ahead and take and, and take Arthur as his sidekick. But I just think it's interesting that um, that he forces it on Arthur in the other versions. And here it's 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 uh, it's Arthur who's 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 the more proactive one. And um, but but again, the Tick always has it in his in his head how superheroes are supposed to be. So you know they they pose for cameras even if there's no cam- Camera there, and uh, they 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 talk very dramatically. He even he even uh, uh, acts as though I think there are, there's a place where he even says that he has a a, a, a a superhero of being dramatic. He's nigh invulnerable, but he also has the the power of being dramatic. And uh, so so uh, he he tells he tells uh, uh, Tick here to to smile. They're not posing for anything in particular, and um, they kind of make this vow to no one in particular uh, that they're going to fight crime together. And um, then uh, there's there's uh, there's kind of an epilogue, um, or, or, or rather, um, well, there's actually an epilogue after this, but but uh, we get we get to the last issue uh, in this issue six. It's Villains Inc. and um, this. Uh, is kind of its own standalone story, and I'll talk about this just briefly. Um, this introduces the Red Scare, who was in the first episode of the live action Tick, but he's an, t- an entirely different character. Um, this is probably by itself funnier than the rest of the omnibus combined. Um, it, it's the, the the idea is that there's this there's this guy who rents out supervillains to want to be superheroes to pretend like um, they beat them so that the city will be proud of them and they can then be the superheroes. So you have um, Running Guy here, and he pays to have the Red Scare fight him, and then for him to win so that the city will be proud of him. And they've got this great joke, by the way, where He's got a, a leaning palm tree on his shirt, and and um, that's supposed to be. And and and, and uh, the, the salesman guy doesn't understand what that's supposed to be, and he says, "Well, I move so fast that it that it sways this other direction." And um, once again, kind of sort of making fun of Superman, uh, uh, he he says, "I'm f- I, I I can run faster than ten fast men." And uh, so so basically, what ends up happening is that he uh, fights the tick. Um, on a, or that that um, Red Scare fights the tick on accident. Um, Red, Red Scare. I'll get back to this in a minute because that's something we need to talk about. Um, but Red, Red Scare thinks he is supposed to fight Running Guy, but they accidentally meet in the wrong place, and uh, so the tick shows up, and the tick is just looking for a supervillain, and when he sees one, he freaks out because finally, six issues in, he's found a supervillain, and uh, so this is the point where he says, "Thank you, God." And uh, Red Scare just thinks that um, the 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 outfit that uh, that um, that uh, uh, hired him out uh, sent a different superhero, and that they didn't call him about it first. So he just fights him, and uh, then the running guy finally finds out about it and uh, gets gets all upset after the tick is is beating him up and gets all upset about it. Uh, and then it's just this very very awkward experience for the tick and Arthur. And the tick's all excited because he thinks he's defeated a supervillain. While while the the city there's nobody to fight right now because the ninja are all gone. Uh, from from the from the previous issue, um, we also um, we also in this issue um, get the uh, let me get back to it. Uh, we get the beginning of um, Arthur and Tick's relationship as a duo, and um, th- this if you know the animated series will look very familiar to you. Um, this is that um, that scene that that exists in all three versions where uh, the, the the Tick is uh, is being shown around Arthur's apartment, and um, and uh, he's looking around for the secret trigger that pops out all of his crime fighting equipment. And of course, he doesn't have that because it's just an apartment. And uh, you, you get the great line that's in all three of them: uh, "What what does your sofa turn into?" And, and Arthur says it, it turns into a bed. Um, the uh, the live action series goes even further with that and and, and uh, makes it even funnier by by then by then having the tick say, uh, "Well, that's that's pretty good. What else you got?" Um, and and you'll notice also this is extremely geeky for me to even know this, but uh, you, you'll notice that that lamp that he that, that Arthur tries to save from from the the tick smashing is the exact same design that it is in the animated series. Um, anyway, uh, that's uh, that's the omnibus. And um, that's that's pretty much what I had to say about it. Um, I know this was extra long. Um, hopefully they're a little bit shorter uh, hereafter. But um, this is some of uh, Evelyn's best work on the Tick, and I wanted to really kind of give it its due. So um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll keep watching Tick Month. Uh, remember that the Comic Book Vault is a vast and wondrous wonderland of comic books that you can both um, buy things from and donate things to. If you'd like to uh, see what we have for sale right now in the Comic Book Vault, you can go to wearegeeksnotnerds.com. Click on the Comic Vault. That'll show you 
show you all of our eBay auctions. You can also go to eBay and uh, search out Captain Logan 1989. Uh, that's where all of our eBay auctions are. And uh, if there's anything you want to send me ever to review, you can always send that to Geekvolution. That's P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas 66285. Uh, hope to see you again on Comic Book Vault and um, all of our other fun tick videos for the month and um, other things we happen to put out. Thanks as always for watching. I'm Captain Logan. See you next time.